This makes like a little... Look, look. Look how annoying that is. That's crazy. What sense does that make? Ugh. What's cracking, people? Angelic Mayhem here. So, welcome to Axis Game Factory. This is a program that came out on Steam about a month and a half ago. And I didn't have the opportunity to take a look at it then, but now that we have a little bit of downtime, um, I've decided to go ahead and take a look. So, what is Axis Game Factory? Well, basically, what it is not is a game factory. Okay? And uh, so, I think my chief complaint about this piece of software is that it's called the game factory you can't do most of the things that would be required for a game in this game factory you can't create any main menus okay you can't do anything in the way of like character development so you can't have any screens that pop up that allow you to do upgrades you can't do anything in the way of save games or load games. You're not actually building a game with this thing. So, well, what are you doing? Well, basically, this is a white box, all right? It's an interactive white box so that instead of having to do your white boxing in Unity or whatever game engine you happen to be using, you can actually build your environment inside of a game engine, which is what this is. That's what Axis Game Factory is. It's a game engine that you can actually edit on the fly. Okay, so I'm going to take you through it and show you what it's all about. So in here we have our little environment. Okay, I've created a little village. And for those of you who don't know anything about game design, um, basically, when a video game begins its life, it doesn't begin as, you know, this beautiful thing with all these textures and stuff like that. It starts as a bunch of white boxes, all right? That's why we call it white boxing. And the idea is that when you want to build, in this case, a village, you actually want to set it up in advance, then go and walk through it so that you can see for yourself if it's actually, you know, like, if it's too cramped, if, you know, there's a, an object that is occluding your view so it gets in the way of the camera. There's all kinds of bad things that can happen during the course of the game, and this is an opportunity for you to test your levels in order to make sure that they're, that they're sound, that they're not, you know, going to break. So, how does that work? Well, basically, um, we're going to right-click, mode, play, and it gives you a couple different options. Um, these basically just change the controls for your little person, okay? So, so we don't care about any of that. We're just going to launch, wow. and we now have our guy, right? I'm going to scroll back as much as possible, and he spawned outside of our little place here. And basically, what we can do is... We can go all the way up like this if we want and do sort of like a top-down uh, action RPG sort of thing. And you can actually take him through your village, okay? And you could say, well, you know, back in here, this is really, really tight, and this might be a good spot for a chest, but down in here, these are all way too close together to the point where, I mean, you know, sneaking through this building, that's just not right. So then you can, you know, more accurately decide, all right, well, maybe I'll move this building over to here, and maybe I'll take this building and I'll push it up against these rocks and give myself more of an avenue, you know, so it lets you test the ideas that are in your head as quickly as possible. The interface in this thing is horrific, so you'll have to bear with me as I kind of fumble with it. You can also go up to places like this, and you can see, okay, you know, this game asset is off the ground okay you can see that it's way up in the air all right so we'll exit out of that objects select and then we're going to go to ugh, f3 which is the terrain editor and we're going to use this and we're going to kill off this paint and we're going to go with sculpting and we're just going to bring this up so that it's now where it should be. And you can actually, oops, you can actually go in here and we can, holding by holding down the space bar, we can actually bring this down. Like that. 
F1 allows you to actually load in different libraries, and with those libraries, you're able to set up different things. So you can bring in a tree library and a rock library and whatever, whatever else you need in order to create your setup here. Um, if we go into, if we switch this out, you can see that there are all kinds of different uh, game assets that come preloaded with this. I didn't make any of these. So then you can actually like take one and you say, oh, well, you know, maybe I want this wall to be curved right here. So you can, uh, let's do this. And then if we, oh man, all right, no, wait a minute. So I'm going to go object select this one and I'm going to rotate it and then move it into place. That's the wrong one. So if I wanted this wall to be more curved, or maybe if I wanted the curve to be out here, and then I wanted this just to go a little bit further, then, you know, if I scroll down here, you can see where that would go. All right. We're going to delete that, though. I swear to you, the interface for this thing is just horrific. It really is bad. Um, hopefully, someday, you know, they'll take a class in interface design, and they'll just know what they did wrong, and maybe, like, version 2.0 of this will fix all this stuff. So, you know, now in order to just select something that I've already placed, I got to go down to object select. Like, that's just weird, okay? Especially since, you know, when I come over here to use this, I want to use my pointer. And then when I come back here, I want to use my pointer. You know what I mean? Stop taking my pointer away. And this, it, this program just constantly is always taking your pointer away. It's ragingly annoying. So uh, this is your terrain editor. You can do different things. For instance, you can actually paint these rocks. Um, like, I, you know, like I have a path here, and then there's grass over here. That path was painted in. Um, you can also, so, you know, that's painting, right? You can do sculpting, which is what the tool is set for right now. And I can actually, oops, wait a minute. So do you see how the camera moves? Like as you're, like if I do this, it's moving while I'm trying to use it, which is incredibly annoying because I want to, you know, like if if the camera is moving, now so is the so is the sculpt tool. So we're we're creating a line of mountains out here if, you know, this thing were more powerful. Okay. So if you want like a little cluster or whatever, you know, like there's different paintbrushes that you can use and you can kind of give it one of these. This makes like a little Look, look. Look how annoying that is. That's crazy. What sense does that make? Ugh. Hopefully you can see what I mean by interface issues. All right, so we're going to get out of that. Um, F4. Uh, this gives you the exact same thing as F1. I have no idea why there's two of them, but, you know, whatever. Um, and so let's do that. Let's, uh, let's actually take, let's say that I wanted to have, like, a little guardhouse. Let's see if they have something like that in here. Um... Perfect. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go down here. Let me dock this thing. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to... Nope, that's wrong. It's... Right. So I want to... No, that placed it. All right, now wait a minute. So if I hold down maybe shift... No, that makes another one. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we want to go like that. All right. And let's say that our guard house is going to go on this side. And we go boop, like that. Perfect. And then to get rid of these other ones, I go object select, click that one. Nope. Click that one. Nope. So there we go. Now we have a guardhouse. Now, theoretically, you know, maybe your guardhouse would have like a little window here or something like that. But, you know, you get the idea. And you're going to make all of these assets on your own. Again, this is a white box. So you're just checking out what it's going to look like. And then, you know, you'll make the assets later in your 3D program or whatever. All right. So let's get out of that. F5. Uh, this is the grid. Uh, if I use B and V, you can actually see that the grid um, moves. And this is how you create flat terrain. You set the grid to wherever you want the terrain to go. And then you actually use the, uh, the terrain tool and it will just level off wherever this grid is. Okay. So we'll go down there, F5, F6. Uh, this is the light box. You can actually change what the sky looks like. 
Um, and then also there's the atmospheric fog. Oops, F7. Uh, this is basic lighting, so if you want, you know, like some sort of super harsh, crazy lighting, you could do that. F7, F8. Uh, this is the camera. You can actually, uh, you know, actually change how far away you are up the field. There, that's better. Now, there's no way to, like, adjust this depth of field. So, you know, I guess you're just whatever. It's really kind of annoying. And then uh, F9 is going to be uh, just your general options. Notice that it says FPS is 29. Uh, the, well, 30, actually. The reason for that is because I'm running Fraps at the moment. So it actually is telling you not that you, you can't set that number. You can't say, I want this to be 60 frames per second. It's telling you, you have, you know, all these objects in here and each one has, you know, like its own material attached to it. And it's using up so much of your graphics card that this game will run at X FPS, okay? And it, it constantly is recalculating that. So if you put so many items in here that, you know, your FPS tanks to four, obviously you can't have a game that does that. You can't play a game at four frames per second. So that's no good. So it actually kind of tells you if you've gone too far in the way of, you know, like adding things and design and stuff like that. So what are my final thoughts on this? Uh, basically, I think that this is a good program for somebody who is a beginner, who doesn't know anything about, uh, you know, like creating a level and wants to just kind of skip past all the programming and get right in there and throw down their ideas and then explore them. You know, see if they can actually, you know, create a level on the fly that's good or if they have to tweak it. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click the like button, share it with your friends, or subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this in the future. I'm Angelic Mayhem, and I'll see you next time.